Oh, wow. More wrestling's coming back. Yes, yes. Because God knows I'm getting sick of WWE and actually bull none. Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And we'll start off the show, as I always do. I want to give some thank yous out. Because there's not much I have to be thankful about. You know what I'm talking about, NXT. Boo, NXT. But before I get into the negative and some news, I have some thank yous to give. Carrie Ann, thank you very much for your comment. I do try. And you are a winner twice over because you got that six count. Nico of Death, thank you for confirming what I thought. You saw not only Eric Bugenhaven or Richard Bugs or whatever he's called now, Eric Bugenhaven, but we saw him in the crowd, and we also saw, I forget what his moniker was. Wow, it's been that long. But we saw, oh, the finest. Kona Reeves. So thank you very much for confirming that. Just like Eric Bugenhoff, you, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
Last but, last, last but not least, Jake! You, sir, are listening to your briefcase boombox while I watch, while listening to my show. While you could. Those are the thank yous. Um, I'll go on my, I promise this time, will be a short rant and rave. I did longer rant and rave about not doing stupid stuff. I think uh, last week. But NXT, why did you block my video for 20 freaking seconds of the Velveteen Dream driving into, into the area in a Lamborghini? You decided to block my video? So disappointed in you, NXT. And people wonder why WWE is losing viewers. They do dumb stuff like that for 20 seconds? Really? I gave commentary. Should be under like fair content or something like that. What the hell is that? I have to go clean this carpet again. But, uh, NXT, shame on you. Um, they don't get anything. Oh, some positive news now. New Japan, I just watched part of it. Um, they had a press conference. Um, today or tomorrow. I forget what time it is over in, in Japan. I have no idea. So these dates, I will qualify this by saying these dates are all going by... JST, which is Japanese Standard Time. I have, I honestly forget what it means means for me here in the States. Um, all I know is that I think the Wrestle Kingdoms came on at like 2 in the morning, I think. 1 or 2. Here, so it was 8 o'clock JST equals 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if I do the math really quickly, it's a six-hour difference. But I always forget because of the dateline if it's the day before or the day after. So I'm not too sure if it's the 14th on Sunday at 2 a.m., or is it Tuesday the 16th? Well, for me here in the States at 2 a.m., I always forget New Japan again because they have that terrible time slot. And I've been working, it's hard to stay up at 2 a.m., and you actually have a job that starts at 8 a.m. because God knows I don't want to do that. But that and, oh, another important thing. So New Japan's prepping venues. They've done the whole antibody testing for the wrestlers, staff, officials, every, everyone involved with that. Uh, Young Lions, camera crew, interviewers, um, whoever builds the ring, stuff like that. And then July 12th, we are getting live 100% unscripted, untalked to audiences. Because New Japan's, their goal, again, assuming things work out the way they should, uh, July 12th, which I have no idea when it is because my calendar runs up. Again, I just don't know. Uh, it's either Friday. I, I can't tell if it's. I, I forget if it's Monday or Saturday, Florida time, because that day is a Sunday, so I don't. I honestly don't know if it's Saturday or, or Monday morning for me. Whatever it is, Japanese Standard Time, July 12th, they're actually going to have real fans in the arenas. Only at one-third capacity, but trust me, one-third capacity is better than yelling at 12 people. Cheer, damn it! So, we shall see how that goes. 
Man, there's a lot of garbage here. I, I hate it because this is where I can eat to when and watch wrestling. But enough about that. So that's all the be, 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 news. That's a quick little news break. So hopefully I'll get to post. I'll actually get to post this, post this in the morning too because they bump the one job back from tomorrow until next or this coming Monday because, yeah, well, next Monday, whatever. Because that day's going to suck. I'm not going to feel like doing it then. I worked that day. Wow. That Monday is brutal. But that's okay. I'm going to talk about some Monday Night Raw. Oh, and also, before I do that, I don't know how he did it, but El, Va El Vagabundo dos Hijo Trey Trey. He got four out of five matches. He actually got, actually, no, he got um five out of six matches right. I found out that the, the, the face team did win. That's, I have to give him a round of applause because he is obviously knows the inner workings of one Triple H. So let's get into some Monday night news. Raw, I mean. It starts off with an Oscar promo. She comes out there. Um, it's about her match with Charlotte Flair and how she's going to be taking on Nia Jax soon. It's going to be weird. Um, so she cuts a promo. Bailey and Sasha Banks comes out there. They interrupt. And, of course, they're interrupted by the Iconics. And then Charlotte Flair shows up. You know what's going to happen, folks. Holla, 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 player. It's going to be a triple threat tag team match. So we have Charlotte and Asuka taking on the Iconics, taking on Sasha Banks and Bailey. And honestly, the only thing, this is actually a pretty decent match. Um, I would have laughed out loud if Peyton Royce, because the first move she did, she tried to roll up on Sasha Banks. If she actually got the roll up, oh, that was that would that this would have been the match of the night. But no, it wasn't. Um, it's pretty good. It turned to a spot fest kind of early. Um, again, the, a lot of double team moves by each. There was some slapping and shoving going on. It was it was pretty good. Uh, Bailey and Charlotte. That was actually pretty good between the two of them. Got Charlotte into the corner. They start to uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks all from her. Oscar does a hip attack <laughs> into one corner and delivers kicks to the other. Oscar's the best. Then she did a great. Uh, Bulldog clothes on combination to the Iconics. That's, that was fun. They really made Oscar look strong. And poor Billy Kay. Oh, she, she was eating the yes kicks. And then the flare chops. That's never a good thing. Uh, Billy Kay did use the eat defeat, which is pretty cool. I think mainly because her legs are so long. Uh, Oscar made the blind tag. When Charlotte went up for her moonsault, she blind tags her. She made Billy K tap out. Charlotte's none too happy about this, even though Charlotte Flair and Oscar win. Charlotte then decides to beat up to beat on Oscar, kicks her. It's like I'll see you later. This is a good. This was a good opening match. Um, this whole show seemed long, but not because of this match. This is a good cheeseburger match. Then there was a whole re. I think one of the things that's making Raw really long is they do all these recaps, like, and it's almost a full length thing. So it's long. I mean, I don't mind like a quick two minute, two minute recap. I don't need to see every little nuanced thing that's go that that happened last week. Again, Impact is a pretty good opening of the show. Two minutes. 
Honestly, three minutes at the most. Um, what else is that? AEW, they might show 30 seconds to a minute before the match. Again, that's still good. It still keeps the, the flow. But when you break it up the way WWE and then Smack, SmackDown has just been awful. I, I'll, I'll, I have nothing good to say about SmackDown. Because that, that's getting worse and worse. And right now, Raw is actually better than SmackDown. Um, so Seth Rollins, so they did the whole recap. Seth Rollins and comes by, comes by the stage, kicks poor Byron Saxon out, um, starts to talk to Rey Mysterio, but literally out of nowhere, like Alistair Black, like jumped like over the table and nailed Seth. And then it was like it was like a jump scare moment, because then they cut to commercial and you're like, no, don't go to commercial. I want to see this, and then. By the time the commercial is over, I'm like, it's it's not as effective because you know what happened, and then they show it in slow mo, so that you can see where he comes from. And it's like, oh, okay, so that's what happened. I thought that's what happened, but yeah. And then this starts off a match. Um. Let's kick off the match for Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo taking on Murphy and Austin Theory. Um, fly, Umberto Fly. He's visibly upset about what Seth Rollins did to his hero, Rey Mysterio. That makes sense. Austin Theory counters with a rolling dropkick. That was impressive because he does like a he does like a somersault. And still gets up for like the normal drop kick. That was pretty good. And then ouch. Oh, that knee to the neck that Alistair Black delivered. That just looked vicious. The thing about this match, this match was quick. Um Alistair Black and Umberto win. It was really quick. You really didn't see what the I think. It was like a knee and then a very quick black mask, and that was it. And then Seth got upset because he, he, he's back. He puts on El Mascaris of Senor Rey. When they took from him, you dirty thief. And then, of course, the faces get beat on. Because of the, the, the action was really fast-paced, and they didn't do much junk in between. I'll say this is a good cheeseburger match, though. Then there's a Charlie interview. Uh, Randy Orton teases, yeah, we might have some more guests. Oh, I so wanted to see Christian get RKO'd. But um, for, the, for the peep show with Christian, Edge comes out. Yeah, Christian insults Edge a little bit. Ed, Edge gets that, that look of grit and determination in his eyes. Uh, again, you never mention a man's mother. That's the one thing that will make people fight. Um, what was what was that line uh, from F Fight Perfect? Um, don't try this stuff at home. Unless someone calls your mom a whore. <laughs> and then kick their ass. I forget what it was. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. But it, it was a great little intro to his. Like, yeah, this is done by professionals. This is for entertainment only. Do not try this at home. Unless unless someone calls your mom a whore. Or something like that. And fight perfect. I don't think they're making any more videos, though. Which sucks. They were fairly entertaining. And then Orton interviews from, like... I don't know, some production area, because you could hear, like, the drone of machinery. It's, like, kind of in a boiler room stuff, so, man. Then it was Charlie. She interviews MVP. Again, a lot of interviews. Uh, again, a whole recap of that full Nelson spot. They did a recap of, again, so many recaps. They don't need all this stuff. If we're not interested, we're not going to care. Uh, the Street Poppers and the Viking Raiders. Again, the recap. Then they showed the decathlon. 
I wasn't necessarily happy by it because as far as decathlon goes, I was expecting like the Olympic events. I think there's the the hurdles. Correct me if I'm wrong. The hurdles, the four yard dash, hundred meters. I think it's a four hundred meters, sixteen hundred meters, long jump, pole vault, discus javelin. Oh, that might be it. all of them. Discus javelin shot put. Instead, they had a very contrived decathlon. I almost wish that they did have Bianca Belair on on the Street Profits team. Because I know, I think she was a track athlete. But then the Viking Raiders could have put Sarah Logan on their team. And it would have made it a little bit more interesting the way it was now. Meh. Um, so that was that. I I don't even care who won. Honestly, it was I was just tuned out by it. Then we had Apollo Cruz comes out, so yep, we're going to have a match with you guys to challenge me at Backlash of a triple threat between Angel Garza taking on Andrade. Cien Almas versus Kevin Owens. Fight. Owens fight. Uh, started off really fun. Um, for the most part, Angel Garza and Andrade, they would double team Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens first came out, he started to take out everyone. He just threw one guy against the other boards, grabbed the other one, threw him against the boards. Um, so he started taking him out. When we come back, again, they're, again, Angel Garza and Andrade being on the same faction. They start to beat up Kevin Owens, which makes sense. Um, there was a double leg lock, the stretch, and the infamous oh, make-a-wish move. Uh, Angel Garza. <laughs> it was funny. Angel Garza just started to slap the belly of Kevin Owens. That was funny. But then when it came to pinfalls, this is where we saw some division between Angel Garza and Andrade. I don't know if they're going to break the two up eventually or if Cruz is going to drop the belt to Andrade and then have Angel Garza face Andrade. I have no clue what's going to happen. I don't think Vince knows what's going to happen. I don't think anyone in WWE knows knows what's going to happen minus what happens at, at 5 p.m. on Sunday. So then uh, Kevin Owens, they tried the pin. Uh, then Oh, there's, so there's division between Garza. Andrade, they trade chops. And oh, oh, those those hurt my chest. I don't care what people say. Those were stinging shots. I think I think my chest has like a handprint on it or, or something from, from those chops they trade. Uh, Kevin Owens eventually realizes this. He gets them both with double cannonballs. However, he does too much. Uh, Andrade gets outside the ring. Angel Garza eats a stunner, but Andrade, being the brains of the bunch, realized, hey, if I just throw Angel, if I just throw Kevin Owens out, I'll pin Angel Garza, who's knocked out, and I got a shot at the U.S. title. Oh, there was also a Zelina bump. Wow. Uh, when they were on the outside, again, Garza and Andrade were shoving each other. I forget who shoved who into Zelina Vega. Trust me, those heels Zelina Vega wears, that's probably so easy for her, her just to, like, fall anyway. I'm surprised how she can walk. I'm surprised how any women can walk in those. Because that just... They're not even, like, stripper shoes. Because, like, literally they're, like, four to six inch platform shoes. But it's a stiletto heel. So you don't get... I mean, you don't get like the surface area of like the shoe and like the heel because like even in stripper shoes like sometimes they have a pretty chunky wider heel so you get a little bit more surface area but that stiletto 
you know, that does that just doesn't look conducive to being in a wrestling. But what do I know? So Andrade wins. I'll tell you what, this was probably the best match of the night. Uh, it was a good surf and turf match. Then Sarah Schreiber tried to interview Charlotte. Of course, Oscar shows up, does her little Oscar crab dance. So he's funny. You see Garza and Vega. They don't look happy. Drew McIntyre talks to the Viking Raiders. He goes, hey, after you guys win, I have some turkey legs to celebrate. Ivar likes his turkey legs. Then this is the MVP lounge. It's supposed to be interviewing Bobby Lashley. Drew McIntyre shows up. Um, Lashley sneaks up behind him. He says, he says, okay, MVP. You have two choices. You can either eat your Claymore like a man, or you can cower and run out of here and look at Claymore later like a coward. That's pretty cool sounding. Drew McIntyre is the best. I think they're feeding Drew McIntyre blood points. Because whatever he's saying sounds natural. He's like, okay, touch on what happened to you. And what you're going to do to... And the two ways you're going to get MVP. Have at it. So that's good to see. Because I'll tell you what, you can always tell when some pro wrestler gets a scripted nonsense story because it just, like Seth, it sounds so terrible. Then the uh, Viking Raiders and the Street Profits show up because Bobby Lashley sneaks up behind Drew. Street Profits just wants to see the show. This leads to our next match of Viking Raiders taking on MVP and Bobby Lashley. There we go. My camera was acting funny again, so get this back up to speed before before it cuts me off anyway. Um, so this was actually pretty. This was another. Again, Raw was just a better show. Just felt a three hours because it was no wrestling and recap after recap. It seems so long, but this match was actually pretty fun. Uh, Lashley, he hit the first thing he did was was hit a flatline on Ivar. I felt bad for Ivar. Because no, Ivar's a big guy, too. He, he gets worked over. Um, eventually, MVP gets in. Ivar tags out to Eric. Eric works over MVP. Uh, Ivar does a seat senton. It was a really good back and forth. The thing with this is that it just wasn't one-sided. It just wasn't Bobby Lashley beating on someone. It's a good back and forth. Bobby Lashley would take his licks. It wasn't the typical MVP, uh, MVP just getting beat on. Or Bobby Lashley to make the save. It wasn't the small guy tag team partner who get whooped on for the bigger guy to make the save, which is very formulaic of WWE. Uh, the good tag team work again by both. They they know how to do tag team work. The heels, the isolation, in the, in the uh, in their corner, beat the work come over. The faces of Viking Raiders. They do great tandem offense. Again, MVP Bobby Lashley, not so much tandem offense. But they kind of work it. They work the guy over. They 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 both start punching him and kicking him in the corner. It makes sense though. Uh, Ivar eventually hit a big boot by MVP. That looked vicious. And then Lana was there, and Lana's backstage. Lana looks so stripperish. I'm sorry. Yeah, Lana just has way too much makeup going on. And I know someone say, oh, I need my makeup to look pretty. I'll be honest. If women only probably put on, say, 80% of the makeup that, that they normally put on, they would look so much prettier. Yeah, I've seen, like, my ex-girlfriend, when I would wake up next to her, to me, she looked absolutely gorgeous. And then she downgraded herself by putting on so much makeup. Ah, oh, but it makes my eyes pop out. I'm like, sweetie, your eyes are beautiful. It's like, oh. But she would put on, like, again, spend an hour putting on makeup. It's like, we're going to Walmart. I don't look good for Walmart. There I am in jean shorts, wrestling t shirt, and sandals. I'm like, I'm ready to go. It's like, well, I have to put my makeup on still it's like but sweetie I just I woke up like five minutes ago. You're god, you don't understand. Like, I think it was the summertime, so I think I did put on deodorant. 
Sometimes during the winter time, I don't wear deodorant to Walmart. No one else does anyway. But yeah, so again, Lana's just too dolled up. She's the one that is also getting fed scripted lines to. None of which seems natural. Uh, well, actually, he has a get a good looking power slam. That was good. Eric got the hot tag eventually. Ivar got speared out of his freaking belt. Felt bad for him. Uh, Eric, he got stuck in the full Nelson. He had a tap out. Ivar tries to save him because Rough Force breaks, tries to break it up. That's not happening. Ivar's trying to get in the full Nelson. Uh, MVP eventually does eat a... Uh, Bobby Lashley eats a Claymore but doesn't go down. MVP and Bobby Lashley win in a cheeseburger match. And then this match... <sighs> parts of it were good. Parts of it were overbooked to nonsense. And... I don't like the ending because it looks so... Again, contrived. It's Asuka taking on Charlotte Flair. Um, Charlotte Flair starts off with that quick clothesline. And then Sasha Banks and Bailey come to the ringside. And whoa! Sasha Banks' outfit. What club is she going to? Oh, that's right. Clubs are open now in Florida. So she, she's going to a party somewhere in that outfit. I don't know how to explain it. It was um white with like leopard print tights, a white with leopard print bra. And I guess this is a thing now where women just have like a bra because it's like a tube top, but then like covering just their arms. A neck, they'll wear like stuff. It's like me wearing like this much of a t shirt, another t shirt on underneath. I suffer it's all like white leopard print and way too tight material for, for this guy to be wearing. And those glasses are just. I like the fact that they're at least real sunglasses now and not the little slitty glasses. If I can, can, can I even say slitty glasses? I guess so, whatever. Not monetized anyway. I don't know. This is this YouTube thing. One day I'll figure out Twitch. But that's a whole other issue for a different day. Um, and so they come out, they just start talking about how great they are. Uh, you know, you see the iconics in the audience. They look like they were going out. They were, they were like, they looked like they were going to go out too. They're all changed and everything. Impressive. If, if Billy Kay changes that quickly, quickly, I want her as my next girlfriend. But that's a whole other issue right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, if your Sarla sends Asuka over the desk. Again, uh, back then they go to come again. Too many, too many oddly placed commercial breaks. Then and back in the ring, Charlie gets stuck in the royal octopus hold, uh, which uh, which Oscar then also turns into a sunset set flip. However, Charlotte Flair kicks out, does the basement drop kick. Then Charlotte decides to stretch Oscar, and then Charlotte with those knees. Uh, as sometimes Charlotte also got mat burning because you could see like a chunk of flesh. Like, I saw, like, the blood around the wrist. So she cut something on her wrist. And, and no, not, not slicing her wrist. But she had, like, a cut on the outside of the wrist. And then you see, like, a chunk of flesh missing. I'm like, oh, that's Matt Burn. I know what that is. So that could have happened at any time. Again, it's probably, like, more of a nuisance than an injury. But, yeah, it turned red for a little bit. Like, Got the blood off, and then it's like, oh, all done. And Asuka's outfit was coming off. And by the way, Charlotte Flair, you're going to show everyone Charlotte Flair soon if you keep on wearing those less than booty shorts, I guess. But that's again, that's a whole other issue. And Charlotte Flair, actually, from from 
Her leaked pictures actually looks pretty good from the waist down. Or from the, the mons pubis down. Because like you can see her hip bones. Ugh. Her tummy looks okay, but her breasts look terrible. But yeah, anything from the mons pubis up looks horrible. Or not as good as it should. Mons pubis down. That's good. Uh, let's see where I leave off. Oh, then Asuka had a dragon screw leg whip when Charlotte's leg was caught in the ropes. I figured she'd work over her legs more than she did. Charlotte hits hits some knees. Again, Charlotte has vicious knees because she took down her knee pad, so it's using that to go after Asuka. Asuka rolls her up in a small package. And they, I caught it! Chump. Sasha and Bailey. Eventually, then, when we went to break again, the referee was told the referee kicked them out. Again, just distracted everyone. Uh, it was a pin attempt. Oscar reversed that into an arm bar. Uh, Charlotte Flair. Yeah, she, yes, Matt, that's when I saw the mat burn. And she did a catch belly to back, which looked absolutely amazing. Oscar tried a hip attack. And then it became everyone's favorite time. Rest hold mania. <sighs> oh, well. It is what it is, I guess. Um, it was WrestleMania. Uh, Charlotte Flair and, uh, drives Oscar's knees into the ring post, and then she gets posted herself. The trade of blows. And there was the final thing with the big, because Nijax comes out. So Asuka, she, Nijax gets up on the ring apron. Asuka sees her, hips attacks her. She falls, Nijax falls down. Asuka eats a big boot. And gets pinned, but either I think they were running over a little bit because I think this ended at like 11:01. Naya forgot her timing, or or the timing was screwed up somehow because Charlotte Flair hit the big boot on Oscar, and either there there had to be some, and he, uh, Charlotte Flair. You're going to be like John Cena, where I can see you give the spots to the ref to pass to Asuka. And I can see when you're actually talking to Asuka. Whether Asuka actually understands what you're saying, that's a whole other issue. But when I can see you telling the spots to people, you're getting that John Cena territory where it's like, oh, let's wait to hear the five moves. Are you ready? Five move time. Hey, you, hey! You open the second row in, in the in the lo, in the upper bowl. It's five move time. Might as well be the way he calls the spots. But yeah, because it was like a it was a big boot, and Oscar actually seemed to kick out at three. Because you could you could tell she kicked out, and the ref's like one, two, three, and like all of Discord's going like, huh? She kicked out. Boom. So based on that finish alone, it was still a cheeseburger match, but everything the WWE does, if they didn't overthink it, it would be so much better. Like they always seem to be that one or two things away from being a good, from being an okay match to a good match and a good match to a great match. But there's always uh, one or two things that, that sticks in your head and really detra detracts from it. I don't, I don't know if they're trying to do too much, trying to overbook it to anything, but most matches, most matches that are good are kind of solid, but every so often, just like with this match, they do that one or two things too much, and it's like, eh. So, but that was Monday Night Raw. Actually, I'll tell you what, for the most part, it was a cheeseburger Raw. And then tomorrow I'm back live streaming because, again, they blocked me, but that's 
That's NXT. That's a whole other. For 20 seconds still sucks. Um, AEW is going to be reviewed. That's Wednesday. Thursday, we'll have predictions for Backlash. Friday, SmackDown. And I'll see if I can be a little bit more knowledgeable about stuff for Backlash on Sunday. Because I'll probably get home a little bit late because I do have to work that day. But, yep, I'll get home do my review of that. Cause the only good news is that WWE is doing shorter pay-per-views. So you're not, like, there for, like, the slogging of a, of a thing. So we'll see what happens. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone that watches. You guys have a good night, and you'll hear from me tomorrow. Bye.